Bayerisches Motorenwerk, BMW. 90 years of automobile history on display in all its glory in the company museum, reopened after two and a half years of building work. Nineteen seventy. Construction starts on the new BMW headquarters and museum complex. Not only is the bowl form an architectural novelty, it is a real eye catcher. The footprint is only 20 meters in diameter at ground level, but all of 40 meters above. The goal is to evoke the mobility of the street in a static building. When the museum opened in 1973, the exhibits were displayed on the walls in the form of a rising spiral. On the 21st of June 2008, the chairman of the BMW board, Norbert Reithofer, welcomed visitors for the first time to the completely renovated museum. Now there is five times more exhibition space, 5,000 square meters all told. The highlights of the history of the mark stand on bridges, on squares and streets. There are 125 exhibits in all in 25 categories. They include car making, motorcycles, the Mark's history, motorsport, and an area devoted to the in-house tuning division. There are the milestone models like the BMW 328. Once built in Eisenach in eastern Germany, the BMW was the dream sports car of its day, a two-seater convertible with a two-liter six-cylinder engine. 80 horsepower pushed it to a top speed of 150 kilometers an hour. Ernst Henner was at the wheel of the 328, which won the Nürburgring race in 1936. Four years later, BMW scored a 1-2-3 triumph at the Mille Miglia with 328 coupés. From 1937, the model was on sale for 7,400 Reichsmarks. But the BMW Museum is not just about sports cars and luxury saloons. A major milestone for BMW was the tiny Isetta. In the post-war years, it was the Isetta which put the nation back behind the steering wheel. BMW had bought the design from Iso Revolta and installed a single-cylinder engine. The Isetta went on sale in 1955 at a price of 2,580 Deutschmarks. The model's success was due to the extremely simple construction adopted. By 1962, all of 162,000 units had been sold. It was the Isetta, above all, which helped BMW to survive the economic crises of those times. One of the most popular BMW old-timers was the 2 Series. It was the predecessor of the 3 Series and was built from 1966 to 1977. All had four-cylinder engines, although the model designations ranged from the 1502 to the top-of-the-line 2002 turbo. It was with cars of the 2 Series that tuners like Alpina and Schnitzler began working their magic. Many regard this as the most beautiful BMW ever, the 507. It was the top BMW in the 50s and starred often on the silver screen. In those days, the Roadster with the V8 motor cost 26,500 Deutschmarks. In the three years of production, only 251 units rolled off the lines. Only a handful still exist today, and when they change hands, it's for six-figure sums. The 507 was the masterpiece of Albrecht Count von Gotz and was intended as the rival to the Mercedes SL Gullwing model. Well, I have a lot of respect for Graf Gertz and the work that he did. The 507 and the other cars that he did for BMW are fantastic. At the end of the day, though, uh, people buy cars for emotional reasons, then in the 50s and still today.
Another memorable roadster from a different era, the Z1. The production run was limited to 8,000 units. The convertible had a six-cylinder inline motor producing 170 horsepower. With the Z1, several innovations saw for the first time series production. The low weight of 1,250 kilos and a very modern suspension meant that the Z1 was capable of great performance. A roadster of a different kind is the BMW Z8. This successor to the 507 can be bought for around 100,000 euros. 5,703 units were built. The original museum area, the Bowl, is now entirely devoted to prototypes. One of the best known, the BMW Turbo. The 1972 prototype with mid-motor and gull-wing doors was soon to be interpreted in the M1 series. After 1978, there were 460 M1 models built. For the project, a new corporate entity, BMW M Limited, came into being. To celebrate the 30th anniversary of the M1, BMW offered a glimpse of the future with the M1 homage. This car is not uh, scheduled to go in serious production. Uh, the goal of this concept study is really uh, celebrating our rich heritage and showing also how uh, BMW Design wants to uh, work with that tradition. Uh, Yet another concept car is intended to inspire dreams and call into question many preconceptions, the Gina light visionary model. Gina is an acronym, a set of letters that stand for geometry, shapes, and function, how things work, in N, and as a way of saying infinite number, of adaptations, meaning there's a lot of change possible. Gina's skin is entirely fashioned from flexible fabric. Opening doors or the hood becomes a whole new matter. The Gina Light Visionary model, first of all, asks the questions, well, what do we need the skin of a car for anyway? What's it there for? Does it have to be made out of metal? Do we have to make it always in the same manner? Or is it there for different purposes than we thought? Uh, in reality, the aspects of crash and stiffness and ride handling can be handled in a space frame type vehicle entirely without the skin. Annually, around 400,000 are expected to visit the BMW Museum, where Gina and other milestones of the company's history are so dramatically displayed.